Good morning. It's the morning of day 14, our very last morning together in this series. And I have had such a wonderful time and I hope you have as well. So we're going to make a beautiful and delicious loaf of sourdough bread today. I'm so excited for you. This is such a fun time. Learning to bake sourdough and being able to eat your wonderful loaves is just so rewarding. But I wanted to mention failure is the greatest teacher. So if today your loaf doesn't turn out exactly perfect, it'll give you the opportunity to learn from it and figure out how you can improve. So sometimes my loaves don't turn out perfect either, but I wanted to wish you luck today and tell you that I'll be here if you have any questions at all. So today I filmed part of the day using my sorghum starter and part using my brown rice starter. And this is because I made my first loaf with my sorghum starter, but I wanted those of you who are making a brown rice starter to also see what it looked like at that time when you're making 11. So for today, what you're going to do is follow along in the videos in the order that they're posted. So the first video is this one here, and you want to start this video once you have noticed that your starter has reached its peak activity. This video is going to show you how to replenish the starter that's going to then go into your refrigerator. The next video after this one will show you how to make your leaven. So make sure to set the 150 grams of starter aside and the next video will tell you what to do with it. And don't worry, I'll let you know when it's time to set that aside. So let's get started. So we have a big day today. We're going to be mixing our leaven and we're going to be mixing our dough and we will be baking it tomorrow or later on today, depending on how quickly your leaven peaks. So. Right now, I want to show you what we're going to do once your starter is ready. So once your starter has reached its peak activity that we talked about last time, then you're going to take your starter and you're going to use it to mix your leaven and you're going to take what's left over to replenish your starter and replacing it into the refrigerator. So here's my Betty and as you can see it is at perfect peak rise. So this is the perfect time that we want to mix our leaven. It will give us the most possible rising power to our dough. So it looks exactly the way we talked about yesterday. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take out everything that I need here in order to mix my leaven. So my leaven formula that we're going to use today calls for 150 grams of starter. So I'll place my 150 grams of starter into a nice clean jar that I've labeled. This is the starter that we're using to mix our leaven. Then we're going to take the leftover starter and replenish it. So we're going to place this 150 grams of starter aside for now while we replenish our starter. And I just wanted to mention here that if a formula calls for example, 150 grams of active starter, to mix your leaven, or sometimes it's called a pre-ferment, this is exactly what it is. So it's exactly what we're doing now. This is the 20 grams of starter that we will maintain in the refrigerator, and beside it resting is the 150 grams of active starter, which we will use to make our leaven, also called the pre-ferment. So as you can see, it's a very small amount that's left in the jar. All we're going to leave in the jar is 20 grams. So we actually had a little more than 20 grams left, so I discarded a few grams. Now all we have left is this small amount and that's all you need in order to maintain your starter. And in fact, I've recently started discarding all but 10 grams and only keeping 10 grams and replenishing with 50 grams of water and 50 grams of flour. And this has been working great too. And it gives you plenty of starter. And in this way, you don't have to feed it quite as much because we do a higher ratio of feed to starter and we don't want to waste. So we're going to feed 20 grams of our starter, 100 grams of water and 100 grams of flour. And in this way, we're having a ratio of one to five to five. And we're going to have a less acidic environment for our starter, which as we've learned is going to be beneficial to us. And it will also allow us to be able to leave our starter in the refrigerator for at least a week without it becoming hungry. Because our fridge is only at four degrees Celsius, it is going to be slowing down the activity significantly. 
So keeping it in the refrigerator kind of allows it to go to sleep. However, it does go through the food. So it still is active. And if you're finding that with this one to five to five ratio, it's going through the food too fast, you can always increase the ratio. And here I'm showing that I have taken the starter and its feed out and placed it in a bowl to give it a mix. Some people will probably find this a lot easier and then replace it back into your jar. I love having a tall jar as it's easy to see where it's risen and fallen. However, it is difficult to mix, so the choice is up to you. And if you're now wondering, okay, so my starter's going to go into the refrigerator for a week, and then what? Don't worry, we're going to go through all of that as well today. I'm going to explain to you what to do once your starter has been in the refrigerator and you want to take it out and bake again. We will do that at the end of the day today. So once your starter has been replenished and really well mixed, you're going to put on the cover to your jar and of course place your elastic marker. It will become your new best friend. Once that's done, you're going to label your jar and I like to label it with a few different things so I know exactly what it is. Your label should include the type of starter, the date of your last feed and the ratio of your feed or the amount of feed that you fed it. Now, putting your starter into the refrigerator is kind of like putting it to sleep. But do you like to go to sleep with a full stomach or an empty stomach? I don't like to either. So I like to think of the starter in that way as well. So I leave the starter on the counter for about an hour after I've replenished it. Then I place it into the refrigerator, kind of get it going a little bit, give it a chance to digest a little bit of the food and then put it in. And I find that just makes it so much more successful. And finally, don't put your starter to bed hungry either. So if I was to have just taken that 20 grams or say I thought, oh, I've got 70 grams extra, I'll just throw that into the refrigerator. There's just not enough food. Once the starter has hit its peak, then the microorganisms are going to start to die off. So never put your starter to bed hungry either. Always give it a bit of a replenishment. And once again, just like humans, give it a replenishment, a little rest and a chill and it'll be ready to work for you anytime you get the urge to bake sourdough. And that's literally it. All you need to do now is just pop your starter into the refrigerator and you can say good night for a week or until you want to bake again. Mine never stays in the refrigerator quite that long as I am always baking. And here you can see my water kefir grains, which I love, and my original bob, and of course some fermented vegetables, which I love to make. And you can find those recipes on my site. Until next time, Betty. In the next video, I'm going to show you what to do with that 150 grams of active starter. We're going to mix our very first leaven. I'll see you there.